What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and uh, you may or may not have noticed I've received a ton of new subscribers in the last couple days. So thank you all for coming over and subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. Um, some of you may or may not have seen, uh, I did work with Komodo Gaming on the weekend. Um, so check out his channel too. I'm sure you've seen it before. His description down, blah, blah, blah. wow, I can't even talk today. His channel will be in the description because I can't talk today. I'm having a really hard time pronunciating. Um, but I did get a chance on the weekend to work with him. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun, and he's a really, really great guy, guys. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to him, which I'm sure you have, but go subscribe to him. He had asked me to come in and help him build a hospital. Well, actually, I, I had seen his one video, and I was kind of talking to him about the other one, and the, the conversation kind of went in the direction of, well, the hospital should have some cool stuff. And one of the cool things was obviously an elevator, um, which I will show after this. But the other thing that was really cool and really quite simple to set up actually was the sliding doors. Um, so I know you can have sliding doors, but uh, we really, when we were talking about it, we said, you know, sliding doors would be cool. Well, what if we put sliding doors on a sensor with a timer and make it like an actual automatic, you know, door. So I'm going to show you guys real quick how to set that up. So here's my supposed doorway. I've got two little prongs here where I'm going to put the the piston arms that'll move the sliding door in and out. And, uh, and we're gonna set up that really basic circuit. So actually I'm gonna need a sensor out front here as well. So we'll just put that there, excellent. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is set up your doors and you're gonna wanna set them on a controller. And that whole thing is pretty simple. So here's my controller for the doors. The method I use, I, I, I call it the four bar mechanism because really it's four bars. It's one bar coming off and then one bar going across and then another bar going forward and then the fourth bar being your door itself. So I set up the really simple four bar mechanism. Now I have to obviously move these doors. These are one, two, three, four wide doors. So we're going to move the piston. Uh, I don't know, two on each section really is all we need. So we'll just, we'll just make it excessive just because, but really, you know what? We'll do it too. We get away with two. So I go like this, boom, boom. So make sure when you're doing this, you don't, you know, do what I just did and put the hook piece going down because then when the door opens and the hooks are flat, it's going to jam into the block. It won't work unless your hook piece is a whole block above the door. I could have done that. doesn't matter. Goes up, over, across, down, boom, pin, over, front, down, problem solved. Okay, we're gonna make the doors out of glass, nice and easy to see. So just glass. And this is the closed position. So when the, the arms are folded up like that, they're closed and then they extend to uh, open the door. So we're just gonna we're just gonna do this real quick. So let's say that's the door. So we'll hook those into the controller. This is the proper configuration. So the proper configuration is uh, the first one towards the left the third one towards the middle and the second one both in the same direction and then the fourth one matches so this one's to the left so this one's in the direction you want it to open and then these two are in the opposite direction and this one's also in the direction you want it to open i should have remembered that i don't know why i didn't so we're just going to duplicate that real quick So really, when everything's said and done, um, this is your sort of basic uh, sliding door mechanism. You can really, you can use it for just about any door you want. If you wanna have it on a button, this is really, I find the easiest way to do sliding doors and the most compact. Um, those pistons are, are pretty compact. So if you just wanted sliding doors, that's really all you need to know. Um, the really, really simple mechanism, guys. But of course, we wanna do something a little cooler. So the first thing we're gonna do is put sensors in the floor. So this will be our first pickup sensor and this will be the second one. So since we have two sensors, we need an OR gate so that no matter which sensor you activate, the same thing will happen. So we're gonna build an OR gate. So an OR gate's really, really simple. Um, again, I'm so excited for logic blocks, you have no idea. Cause once they add logic blocks, my life is just gonna be complete and uh, it'll be really, really, really easy to build circuits, like just stupid circuits. And it's gonna be just a lovely, lovely time of doing nothing but building circuits. So we're just gonna attach this here. Perfect, perfect, done, just like me, no problem. Oh crap, 
screwed that one up 45 degrees um the reason i do 45 degrees on all the circuits is it's a faster response time i think you can go like 60 but then the sensor may or may not pick it up but if you were going all the way let's say from zero to 90 there's a lot of travel time there that's just dead space where it's not doing anything whereas if you start at 45 it pretty much hits the sensor almost right away I don't know what the exact cutoff is, but you can see there, it's just about ready to hit the sensor. So that's your basic OR gate. So we'll hook one up to here and one up to here. And you can see if I go on this, it'll activate that sensor. So of course, if I were to hook this up right into this OR gate, you stand on this sensor and it would open the door. But now of course the problem is as soon as I get off the sensor, the door's rushing to close. That's okay for most things. I mean, if you put the controller, like right now the controller's I think set to half speed, if you turn this to the absolute slowest speed, I mean, technically speaking, you do have time to run through the door before the sensor closes. We're gonna do it a little bit different here. So we're gonna put this on fast. Nice quick opening doors, right? Excellent. So we have this OR gate. So the next thing we need is something to activate this controller here. So we know when the doors are open and when the doors are closed. And for that, we need a bit. So we set up a basic bit. Now I do my bits very big. Um, there are ways to make smaller bits, so don't be like, oh, you know, your bit sucks. I know it's a big memory bit, but it works. And I like it because it's nice and big and visual and it's easy to make circuits with. But this is your basic memory bit. So how this works is really quite cool. Again, this 45 is just to speed up the response time. 45, 45. So the memory bit is really, really simple. Um, this sensor is what you want in contact. That sensor is your output. So as long as this sensor is on, this controller will be on. This sensor will also activate this controller, which means as soon as this sensor gets activated for the first time, like that, because it's activated now by this wooden plank, it will stay activated forever and these doors will always stay open because this controller is always on. So what happens is if I hit the set bit, Sensor activates, gets stuck, doors stay open forever. I can walk away, do whatever I want, they'll always stay open. But as soon as I hit the reset bit, that top arm swings out of the way, which should be set to 180 degrees. I don't know what it's doing, it needs lots of room. Swings right out of the way. Sensor is deactivated, no problem. Set, reset. So now, all we really need is for this to set the bit, which it will do on the bottom one, perfect. But we also need it to start a timer and the timer is going to go through once and once the timer is complete it's going to pulse the reset bit to clear the whole circuit and shut it off the timer is very very simple uh just make a controller put down a swing arm single swing arm doesn't even matter put down a sensor and this is your basic timer and people are gonna be like what do you mean it's a timer well my initial angle is 45 degrees Depending on where I set the second movement and how fast I set it will determine how long of a time I have. So for this purpose, we're gonna set it here at about half. So now this will also get activated by this. Uh, no, that's not true. I don't want that activated by that. I want this activated by the memory bit. So when you activate, when you stand on the sensor, it'll activate the memory bit. Once the memory bit's activated, it'll start the timer. Once the timer started, it'll go through its little cycle. Once that swings down, then we pulse the reset bit to turn the whole thing off. Now, you can't just wire this into the reset. It is a huge problem. If you do that, you will cause problems and I'll show you. I'm gonna activate this, it's gonna activate the memory, no problem, I'm gonna get off, memory's activated, great. This is gonna go through its cycle, timer's done. See how it's pulsing? Because now what's happening is this sensor, as soon as it gets deactivated, as soon as it deactivates this memory bit is in turn deactivating this. And eventually it'll close, but it kind of pulses a lot before it does that. It has to get into a certain rhythm. So that's stupid. So to fix that, you need a pulse generator. So this is what I call a pulse generator. Um, it's a really simple circuit. And basically what happens is you have two controllers and one of them controls this swing arm at a very quick speed, and the other one controls the sensor at a slow speed, and the sensor's mounted to a bearing. And so what happens is when both controllers are activated, the swing arm will pass by the bearing as the bearing's rotating out. Now, because of the difference in speeds, as soon as you deactivate the controllers, the swing arm swings back past the sensor before the sensor gets a chance to get back into position, and so it'll only ever send one signal through that sensor, not two. 
So you might have to play around with this pulse generator setup. I found the best setup is two bearings and then two, see how this is a uh, three bearing spacing and then a two bearing spacing in height with the controllers set at 90 and slow with the 90 rotating this, well, you can't really tell, but it rotates it that way. And then this second one set at 45 and 270. Now I know once they add logic blocks, all this is gonna be obsolete. That's your basic sliding door. Oh, you gotta stand out long enough till the door opens. Doors open, I can sit here, wait for a bit. Doors closed. So it's a pretty cool system. Um, obviously with the fully adjustable timer, fully adjustable door speed, all that jazz. Change your timer right here. You know, you want it longer, you want it shorter, doesn't really matter. This pulse is obviously the key, the key feature here. Um, but it is required or else you'll get that weird shimmy going on with the doors. So anyways, that's how the sliding door circuit works. Uh, really, really simple. If you guys want this map, I realized I didn't build it on a platform, so I can't upload it to the workshop, but I will upload this map. It's right in the middle of the flatland. Um, if you do want to take a look at the circuit, this will work. Uh, I know the pulse generator is not as pretty as it could be. It could pass by at once. It kind of flicks a bit, but I'd rather have it flick somewhere hidden away than the doors freaking out. The doors will function perfectly. So there is one other thing I wanted to show you guys, and I actually, I talked to Komodo about it, and um, he said it was okay if I used his map. So I have a copy of his map, um, just because I wanted to show you guys how the elevator circuit works. So I'm not going to go into details about um, any of the buildings. So here's that same circuit I just showed uh, on Komodo's map. Exact same system. This is the timer over here, painted purple. So again, it's, it's a little bit uh, slower than the one I had, but same deal, exact same setup. There's the pulse generator right there with those two bearings. Here's the bit. Here's the OR gate and it all feeds way up from the front. So the elevator circuit's actually quite cool. So the doors are really, really simple. Um, the doors on the outside are actually painfully simple. So there's three sets of doors. They're sliding on the roof. Uh, the second floor has one that slides open like the whole wall. And the bottom one has these sort of accordion doors just for space. Um, that's the reason we did the doors the way we did. And, uh, but it's really, really simple. The doors are just hooked into floor sensors. So there's a sensor that senses when the elevator's on this floor, there's one that senses when it's on the next floor, and there's one that senses when it's on the final floor. And the doors have a tiny little bit of a time delay so that when the elevator's passing through the second floor, it doesn't cause the doors to open and close. So that's why you'll see when the elevator gets to a floor, it kind of waits a bit and then the doors open. Um, so really, really simple on the doors, nothing too fancy there. I could have hooked them up into a timer, whatever. It, it really didn't seem necessary. Each of the buttons, there's there's three on the in the elevator and there's three on the outside and they all do the exact same thing. So the one, the first floor button here might as well be pressing the same as pressing the, third, the first floor button here. There's no difference because the elevator doesn't care how you're getting to the first floor, whether or not you're calling it or whether or not you're in it. There's an OR gate here for, these are for the buttons. So the OR gate, this is the OR gate for, you know, the third floor buttons, for the second floor buttons, and for the first floor buttons. Doesn't matter again which one you press. These OR gates will actually set these bits. So this is the first floor bit, which tells me I need to be on, I'm on the first floor. This is the second floor bit, which tells me I'm on the second floor. And this is the third floor bit that tells me I'm on the third floor. When you activate this bit, for example, the first floor, it goes, okay, cool. When you hold the button, this is gonna swing down, which is in turn gonna set this bit. And it's also going to un reset these two. And it does that using these OR gates here. So these OR gates are all the reset bits. So this one is basically one means if I hit two or three, reset one. This is if I hit one or three, reset two. And this is if I hit two or one, reset three. Really simple there again, nothing too fancy. Each of these bits in turn goes to these two OR gates here. If I had more floors, I would have to have more OR gates, but I could use the same system up front. They would just be longer OR gates. If I had 20 floors, I'd need 19 OR gates like, well, 19 position OR gates. So I could go, okay, if it's, you know, reset, reset, reset. Now this is a really basic method. There's other ways to do this. I'm not saying this is the best way, um, but this is the way I found to give you full floor selection, no problem, really, really simple. This one says, if I wanna go to the first floor, I have to extend the piston from two to one. I have to be spacing between the first and second floor. And I also have to be spacing between the second and third floor. So one is actually hooked into both of these, the bit for one. So when you activate that first floor and say, I wanna go to the first floor, both of these will be activated. If you say, I wanna to go to the second floor, it says, okay, well, I don't need this one. So it'll deactivate this one because the one bit is not active. So this one won't count, but it does need this one. So this one's active. These sensors here are just hooked into the controllers up in the roof, which control the pistons up there. I didn't know at the time how much height I had to actually go up and down. Like, okay, I did, but I was too lazy to do the math. So I kind of just said, screw it and made them big uh, and then adjusted the angles down. 
and it worked out quite well. Don't tell Komodo I said that. I could have made it a lot smaller and look more like a straight chain rather than the zigzag. But I honestly don't think he cares. I think he's just happy with the way it works. I'm super happy with the way it works. It's the smoothest elevator I've made. The previous elevator I made with chains was just kind of stupid. Used a lot of circuits. Um, but this one's awesome. I mean, you hold the third floor button and boom, there she goes. So both pistons are currently retracting. It's a little bit jerky sometimes, um, especially when you're going up two floors because it's retracting both pistons at the same time. And then again, these doors really simply just hooked into that sensor. So that sensor senses that the elevator is actually parked at the top. And you can see all the pistons are there, nice and retracted up near the surface. Two controllers there for the pistons and a third controller in the back here. This is for the sliding doors. So anyways, guys, I'm going to get the heck out of Komodo's town. I don't want to show anything there. Um, that's all his stuff. And I encourage you once again, please go check out his channel. And uh, as always, hit those like buttons. Hit that subscribe button if you like this video. I am going to be trying to do a few more videos. I got some viewer requests. It's great. I get all your submissions. Um, go join my Steam group. That's also good too. It's a little bit easier if you want to directly communicate with me. Whenever I'm on Steam, you will see me online. I'm getting a lot of friends requests, guys. I appreciate it, but go join my Steam group. But at some point in time, we might do something cool with the Steam group. I might do uh, some sort of a build competition between the subscribers. So I haven't really decided yet, but I thought it would be cool if, let's say, I make a frame and then you have to build something on top of that frame and then there's some sort of criteria to judge. I don't know yet. I haven't really thought that through, but I thought it might be cool. Uh, maybe put a prize in there or something. But if you guys like this video, remember to go hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. It's fantastic, the support we've been getting recently. Um, I really appreciate all you guys who come out to the channel. It's it's so great. You guys are you guys are the reason I do this. Um, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for all you guys and for the support you've given me. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.